Today you'll find out how an ordinary leech cuts through the skin. And whether an aphid that sucks plant juices can do it too. And you'll be amazed at how beautifully some microorganisms die. This is a common citric acid. It looks like white prisms of sorts, it is very similar to sugar. But if you add a little vinegar to it, then everything changes. The crystals react with the vinegar and begin to create a sort of a rainbow color. At times they can appear to be some kind of space asteroids or comets. Bubbles that are made of gas add some charm to it. And this crystal here looks like a small lemon, after all it's a citric acid. We wanted to take a closer look at an ordinary leech. Well, not so ordinary, it's a medical one. They place them on the human skin so that the leeches can suck out human blood. The leech moves very much like a worm. The only difference is that the worm has no special suction cups at both ends, while the leech does. Sometimes they suck so much that it's simply impossible to turn them off. And its skin is so firm that it will survive even if an adult steps on it. And this is its main weapon. Behind these three grooves there are three sharp blades that cut through the skin to get your fresh blood. By the way, I once had four leeches on my stomach and face. And I have to say, it wasn't very pleasant. After they bite you, the blood flows for another 12 hours without a break. And the traces of their teeth are still visible years later after the bite. And they will most likely stay there forever. You may have once seen these black parts of the stem on some plants. And no, it's not mold. It's a large colony of insects called aphids. The colony consists of hundreds or even thousands of small creatures, which pierce through the stem with their trunk and suck juices from it. This is a mother aphid, and this is a little aphid. Mums incredibly often give birth to their offsprings. How often do you think new aphids can give birth? No, not a week, not even every day, but almost every hour. If you want, we can try to film the birth of a new aphid. Look at this boy, instead of sucking the juice from the plant, he dances in peace. Colonies can be of several species. For example, this is a red variant. By the way, it's very easy to see their trunk which they suck the juices with. The most interested of you could ask what are the ants doing near these aphids? Why are they around them? Maybe to eat them? No, they are here to protect them from predators. And the aphids feed them a special syrup. We haven't managed to film this process for a long time. But an hour later we succeeded. When the ant got hungry, he began massing the aphids with his tentacles, and they gave him some sweet syrup straight from the... Uh, uh, the back hole. So what, the syrup is very nutritious and it's essential for ants to survive. Look, do you see that? This drop is a syrup. During the year, ants can milk up to 5 liters of this syrup from an aphid colony. Some females even have wings, to fly to other places and build new colonies there. We have noticed that each ant is in control of its small herd of aphids, in which it behaves like a shepherd, first letting them eat and then milking them. But from whom do ants protect them? Well, it turns out that cute ladybugs are in fact an aggressive predator which attack aphid colonies. Here the ladybug hit on a leaf, under which sat a few aphids. He climbs to the other side and begins to eat them. The ant is trying to do something, but it seems that his bites are not strong enough to persuade the ladybug. 
second ant joins in, but the ladybug is very hardy and doesn't want to back down. They often only fly away when they are fully stuffed. And that may need up to 10 aphids. Probably for this reason, ants often build small fortresses out of clay directly on the stem of the plant. The walls built around aphids have a small window that the ladybug cannot fit into. I wonder if aphids could bite through human skin and if they can even do it at all. I put a few individuals on my toes and, you know, sometimes I felt a sting. Maybe an aphid was trying to bite through my skin. The next day I went for a walk to a small lake and took a small container with me to take a water sample. I believe that I will definitely find at least something alive there. I also took a few different plants to attach to all sorts of organisms. We place a drop of water under a microscope. And the first thing I noticed was a worm tangled in algae. I wanted to help him, but I couldn't because he was very small and it would probably kill him if I tried to get him out. As we get even closer, we can see how its organisms are organized. And now you can see something very unusual. Although it's nothing special at first, it's a slipper animalcule. You probably learned about it in school in biology classes. But at one point, something incomprehensible began to happen. Pay attention to its tail part. Fragments of its body began to separate from it. What's happening? And now the same thing is happening with a different end. It happens in a matter of minutes, and the slipper has already lost two decent pieces of its body. Why is this happening? It's incomprehensible to me. But this is exactly how a death of a slipper looks like. Although, on the other hand, I see no reason for its death. Since so far it looked like she's very healthy and fast. Maybe these organisms are just programmed. That they will die after a while. In that case, it looks very unusual and even fascinating. It kinda looks like a crash of a spaceship losing its parts in the process of destruction. Surprisingly, although a relatively small part remained, the slipper is still able to move in space. But after a few seconds it hits an obstacle and dissolves into space forever leaving its body as food for the other creatures. It looks like a computer graphic from some fantasy movie, an ending to a journey that we had the opportunity to watch together. <laughs>